51 in a win to redeem himself on Sunday. Damian Lillard kept the ball rolling last night when he tied his career high 61 points and has now willed the Blazers into sole possession of the eighth seed. Shannon, what do you expect from Dame going forward? Greatness. I expect him to keep doing whatever it takes to get this team in the playoff and to compete at a very high level. And that's what great players do. That's what superstar players do. They lead their team. Dr. King once said the uh, ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in times of convenience and comfort, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. True. And in a situation like this, Skip, and I know it's, it's not applicable, so people don't be talking about, you talking about, you comparing Dame Little to Dr. King. I'm just saying, Skip, every game is a playoff game. It feels like he's exerting game seven energy. Because he knows he can ill afford to lose to him. Now, he's gotten great help from the Grizzlies because they've crashed, they've crashed landed, Skip. And, but still, he needed this game yesterday to make sure he can control his own destiny. So now we know they're in the playing game. They're going to either be the eighth or the ninth seed. So we know that. With that being said, Skip, this is what great, this is what uh, uh, superstar players do. They find a way to say, you know what, guys? Your back's messed up, CJ. I got you. Nurkic, you in foul trouble. I got you. Jay, Gary Trent Jr., you're having an off-night shooting. I got you. Guys, get on. Let me take you there. Where we're going, let me take you there, Skip. He's leading uh, uh, in the bubble. He's averaging 41 minutes a game. He's averaging 37 points a game. He's averaging 9.3 assists. That's unheard of. Mm. And, and leading the uh, bubble in points created. Skip, this is the third most uh, minutes he's ever played in the stretch. And you think about it, the other two instances were in the playoffs. Skip, he's giving you game seven energy. He's giving you that on a nightly basis while standing tall. If it's hard for me to believe to see a scenario, if this was Steph Curry or this is Kevin Durant or this LeBron, and they're doing exactly what Dame is doing, we're going to heap praise and adulation. I'm going to give that man his flowers right now. He deserves a bouquet. He deserves an applause. He deserves adulation. That's been a virtuoso. And he's giving you those performances. Has he faltered down a couple of times in the bubble? Sure. But, hey, I, give, him, give him to me. I take him. Mm. Skip, I expect nothing but greatness from Dame Lillard. He's on a mission, and he's going to see this thing through. Mm. I hope you are right. I know you hope I'm right. Now it is Dame time. Last night was just a small part of Dame time. It was a game they almost had to win, and they did. And I give him that, and he was, for the most part, sensational, all-time sensational. But now he has the greatest opportunity of his career to right the wrongs of his past, of the Western Conference Finals last year. And I'm going to detail that in just a moment here. Some of the, the wrongs of the bubble so far that put them in a precarious position going into last night's game. He can right the wrong of the Clippers just shaming him, clowning him, laughing at him for missing the two free throws in the late tying three against a Clippers team that was obviously without Kawhi and Paul George in the fourth quarter. And he has a chance to take care of business against the Brooklyn Nets, and I'm not sure who's going to play for the Nets. Last night, no starters played. Jacques Vaughn said they're beat up. I, I don't know if any will play. Will they play maybe a half? Right. It's a game you should take care of business oh, yeah, and yeah, win. Yeah, that's yeah. that's going to be t uh, Thursday evening. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a game, Skip. You go ahead and blow them out and get Dame some rest. Okay. And it, it looks like they'll play Memphis. I think Memphis is going to be able to win its last game. Yeah, because they don't know if Utah's going to play anybody. Okay. So <laughs> if Memphis wins, Memphis will, I'm pretty sure, be in. Right. And then Memphis will be the nine. So you, you've got two shots. You have to win one of two games Correct. to eliminate Memphis and move forward to play the Lakers. The Lakers. Yep. What a great opportunity because people are, are again, commentators with huge respect. Shaquille O'Neal, Greg Anthony, they're already predicting that Portland will knock off your Lakers. Mm -hmm. They are flat on the record mm -hmm. already predicting it. Right. So it's a great opportunity for a team on paper. I know CJ's got some not back displaced injury. back injury. I, I I don't know. I think it's more of an irritant. It's obviously not stopping him from playing. But will he be quite himself? Will Gary Trent Jr., will the lights get a little too bright? Are they starting to get too bright for him? It's going to be Dame time. Mm -hmm. And, again, you do have Nurkic back, and you do have um, Collins back. Right. And all of a sudden, you you look like with, with Mello, the, the new improved Mello, mm -hmm. instead of the old Mello, 
you, you have a chance to do something very special here. So again, I can't wait because now you're, you're in the, the biggest spotlight you've been in. I, I think this spotlight will be even bigger than the one last year because nobody really thought much of Portland at that point. But remember, Golden State did not have Kevin Durant. Right. So I boiled down that series to basically two guards versus two guards because these two guards are really good. Right. And obviously they're not quite as good as Steph and Clay, who have been all time great. Right. But if you look at those four fourth quarters last year in the West Finals, and I came in here every morning and I said, man, because I thought Portland could win at least a couple of games off of that Golden State team that was struggling at that point. And all four games after three quarters were very close. All four games were winnable for Dame Dollar, the guy that you say is all-time clutch. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I thought he would be too. And in those four fourth quarters combined plus one overtime, he shot eight for 26 from the field, which was 31%. And from three, he was five of 17, which is 29%. And he wound up a minus 30 for those four fourth quarters and overtime. No Kevin Durant, shaky Golden State. And Golden State managed to survive all four games plus winning in overtime when Dame just, he just disappeared in overtime. He went one of three from the field, all of one from three. But so you, you do realize that Golden State had played without KD okay. and won 73 games. They had played without KD, won 67 games and a title. Okay. So it's I, different. I always ask, are you that guy or not that guy? So let me, he but, wasn't that guy. But let me ask you a question. He had a chance to show. In the history of the game, when had a superstar underdog been favored over a dominant team? Michael Jordan was never favored when he was the underdog against the Pistons. He was never favored as the underdog against the Celtics. But now y'all heat that on Dane to try to make him look bad. Why wasn't Michael Jordan favored over the bad boy Pistons? You keep telling me he's all-time great. And, Michael, and last year, going into this series, I, I was with you. Hold up. I'm like, okay, here we go. And guess what? If they can keep these games close, and they kept all four games close going to the fourth quarter, I thought it was Dame time. It, it was. And, and not one time in four tries was it Dame time. And you remember, Michael Jordan had a 2-1 lead over the bad boy Pistons. Mm. What happened, Skip? Why do we keep bringing up Michael because, Jordan? Because I'm trying it, to show it, you how unfair it, you are when you evaluate it, Dame. It's just That's why. blasphemy. You, you can't compare them. Yes, I can. Easy. I'm not trying to compare the players i'm trying to uh, uh, compare what you're doing here because michael jordan went six and zero oh in the finals with six in you see? it's unfair what happens when you get to what happens what it, happens this it, guy hasn't played in one finals yet okay. that's been my issue okay. just show me so from 84 to 90 how many finals did michael jordan make okay he was up against some of the you greatest see, you teams. keep making excuses that's not an excuse it's a fact you love the Celtics. Larry Bird was your favorite player. So let me ask you a question. It's hard to so, get through those so guys. Let me ask you a question. The bad boy Pistons were bad to the bone. Let me ask you a question. They defended at the highest level. Golden State, are they any Ooh. good? Where would you rank the Golden State Warriors? Well, you, your guys knocked them off. They were up three to one on your guys, and, and LeBron and Kyrie came back and got them. They, they said, I mean, uh, what I've been seeing is that the 18 – uh, 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 Golden State Warriors mm. might be one of the two best NBA teams in NBA history. Kevin Durant was gone. Kevin Durant was there in 2018. That was no, his first year. I'm year. saying last year he was gone. Yes. Yeah. But skill. Vulnerable. Skip. You thought they were vulnerable. It's a difference. They were not playing at an extremely high skip. level. It's kind of like when you took when you took a certain like you took Gronk out of the lineup. With Tom Brady, and he still won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. It's because the other guys had played with Brady for such a long time. Yep. It wasn't like you were just taking a guy that had been. So the guy's like, okay, we've done this before. Steph, Steph and Clay and Draymond said, hold on, we won 73 games before. Why do you think Draymond said what he said to KD last year, Skip? Mm -hmm. He said, we did this. We won this thing without you. Mm -hmm. We went been successful without you. So they have the utmost confidence that they could do it without KD. My only point is, Skip, is that everybody is heaping this on Dame, says, you should beat this, you should beat that, when they never, ever did that to any other superstar that was an underdog. Shaq's been an underdog, but they never said Shaq should have won a, a, a series. They, uh, Michael Jordan was an underdog. They never said he should have beat the bad boy Pistons, even after he went up a game on them. Mm. Why you got to do that to Dame? To try to make him look bad to say he's not a superstar if he don't beat the, one, the number one seed? You're telling me he's all-time great. He has not played in a finals yet. You, you can't even put him in the category of those other players. So skip. And by the way, I'm going to repeat this to you, just so you got the gravity of this. Since he came into the league, 
Damian Lillard has the worst winning per percentage in the playoffs of any player in the league since he came in the league. Is that all his fault? Obviously what not. What about the players that didn't make the playoffs? What's okay. their win percentage? Okay, well. I'm just saying, this guy is known as a superstar. There's a big super, all caps, in front of his name. But it's I just need to see it. it and, and again, just in plus minus in the playoffs, he has the second worst since he entered the league. He's minus 219 going into last night's game. He was minus 219. Skip. So my point is, is it all his fault? No, but it's time to show. I'm happy for him. He has a sensational all-time opportunity see, now. And if he doesn't well, do he it, does. if he doesn't do it, no. if he doesn't beat the number one seed, that, that, that validates your point. He's not that guy, right? Have people already picked it? it do you have respect it. for Skip. Shaq's basketball Skip. knowledge? I, I do. Skip. Greg doesn't. Anthony, I worked with Skip. him a long time. He really, Skip. really knows basketball. He's picking Portland. Skip. Okay, I get that. So in other words, because Shaq, who played the game, was an all-time great. Greg Anthony played the game. Because they pick him, if Dame Lillard doesn't deliver, it validates your point he's not that guy. Is what you're going to use. That's your argument. When you've never used that argument for any other superstar player that was the underdog and didn't knock off the top seed, you never use that. He hasn't proven anything yet. He hasn't even played in the finals. You can't put him in the same conversation. Yeah. Michael Jordan didn't play into a finals until 91. He came into the league in 84. You didn't make that argument for Jordan. When Michael Jordan was a true freshman at North Carolina <laughs> in the, the, the most talent-packed game I ever covered in college basketball, I was sitting courtside in New Orleans. I saw some kid they called Mike Jordan hit a jump shot to beat Georgetown in they, they, obviously, it was Patrick Ewing, their sleepy Floyd, mm -hmm. loaded. Mm -hmm. He hit the shot of shots as a true freshman. Yes. Okay, he did that. Yes. You can't take it away. Yeah. It was not in the last two minutes. It was in the